Happy Thursday. Today we have a Freightliner Cascadia. Customer states, the gauges on the left work intermittently. Okay, so what that means is sometimes these are down and they do not work. All of a sudden, boom, everything starts to work, including the tachometer. So pretty much the gauges on the left over do not respond. So what you want to do is automatically check your wires behind here. Okay, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to explain why as quickly as I can. So these little wires or these bridges okay they go essentially from one gauge to another and they kind of piggyback off of each other okay they tend to get loose over time this tachometer was already broken so you're going to have a bad contact so if you're figuring the way this thing works it's going to kind of bridge over to this okay it's going to bridge over to here here to here here to there so you can kind of see how it piggybacks off of each other so we're going to put a new tachometer i recommend to when you put these back in okay if you're going to if you're gonna notice, give me a second here, guys. If you're gonna notice, there's a little tab. Pull that tab out, it should come out. You might need two hands to do it. Hold on, I need two hands. Okay, guys, we're back. So I had to use two hands in order to take that one out. So this particular one, okay, what you're gonna wanna do, of course it gets installed right there. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to record and do this shit at the same time with one hand. What I recommend to do is get this little cable here, okay? Once it's installed, you're gonna wanna twist it okay twist it twist it twist it twist it twist it twist it you're gonna see me kind of turning it nothing will happen to it you're not gonna damage it anyway kind of like a spring you're gonna kind of provide some tension once you're comfortable with that plug that back in done you're gonna do the same thing for this plug the same thing for that plug and then the same thing for this plug so you're again you're gonna provide a tension and if you're gonna notice there see how it's got a little bit of play at the base of it that kind of creates that false contact and that's why the gauges don't respond. So we're gonna put a new tachometer on, connect everything, and I'm gonna do these little twisties on it and we're ready so to go. So in case you're asking or wondering, we do have the tachometer. Now it is available in a chrome bezel. So what that means is this little chrome piece is already gonna be installed. Some of them come with a black bezel and I think the part number obviously is gonna change somewhere in there. So again, this comes with a chrome bezel. So that's what we're gonna do because the rest are chrome. So we're gonna take this thing out this is trash. You don't need that anymore because the new one is going to come assembled and pretty much ready to go. Okay, let's see what we have inside. We've got some hardware, which is what you're going to need to mount it. It's got the two little screws in the back. And let's see what we have here. A little bit of bubble tape or bubble wrap. We don't need that. We are going to need that. And here is our new tachometer. Again, it's ready to assemble and install. Let me show you how. Okay, that guys, so really quick, you're gonna notice you have two of these cables that go to the back of the tachometer. I don't know if they matter which one is which. In other words, if you can switch them, does anything happen? Uh, however, pretty simple. So this is gonna be your closest one to the left, which will be your, like your zero, zero RPM. And this will go over to the right side, which will be the high RPM. And again, that's pretty much how that is going to work. So let's get the new tachometer installed, secure it, connect it. And then so we'll one go more thing it. to note, and again, I'm kind of jumping all over the place because I don't have my GoPro, but so I'm using my phone to do all this. This is your tachometer. You're gonna notice there is a little notch at the bottom of your gauge, okay? That notch is gonna get installed right into the cluster, right into the board, and you're gonna see right here, there is a notch at the bottom. So that will secure it into place. Once you do that, you're gonna need your hardware, which again, comes included for the purchase okay now this is original it's not an aftermarket i don't know if there is aftermarket available uh but let's take a quick look at it here so that's going to secure to the back you're going to have two of these little bolts and i think it's going to be a t15 t15 or t15 it's a torx um and that's pretty much it guys so once you install this thing let me right this is going to go here on the back it's going to secure to the motherboard or to the board or whatever you want to call it and then you're gonna use these little screws to install here and here, okay? That's pretty much it. I'm sure you're not gonna over tighten it down, but that's how you're gonna secure it. It's very simple. It's something you can do yourself. So let's get this installed, do our uh, our prep, installation, test, whatever, okay, and go guys, So there. you can actually remove this entire thing and work on it outside, but I'm honestly just uh, wanna do it a little bit easier, have it in-house. So with your left hand, you're gonna hold it and secure it. The right hand, you're gonna go ahead and install your screws. Just kind of run them down by themselves, okay? There is no thread on the plastic from what I understand or what I remember, and that's pretty much it. So the way you see it there, the way it's being secure, that's the way it's gonna sit in there. Of course, you're gonna snug it down so this 
tachometer is not going to bounce around. You're going to grab your right there and then just simply tighten her down. Okay, and make sure it's again sitting in the right spot before you completely go full, you know, all the way down. And hold on. And that's pretty much it. So that's how that's going to get installed. It's going to secure it, it's going to seat it into place right there. Make sure it's snug. And again, don't overdo it because it's plastic and you don't want to break it. This thing's over 200 bucks, probably closer to 250, maybe 300 bucks, depending on where you're going to get it. So there it is. It's secure. This is the one I was telling you about. And again, all I really want to do is just simply tighten it down, twist it, twist it, twist it. And then we're going to install that or plug that right in there. You're going to hear the click. Hold on. Okay, maybe no click, but it's in there from what you can see. We're gonna do the same thing for this one here. I'm just gonna twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Provide a little bit of tension on that. And then plug it in, same thing. Okay, let's see if you can see that. Done. Okay, so this has been twisted and secure, twisted and secure. Uh, I think I did these yesterday, but you know, I'm gonna give it a little extra something just in case. Because again, they all kind of piggyback off of each other. So once we do that, we should be good to go. So I'm going to put the camera down for a second. I'm going to twist it, reinstall it. I'm going to test. Uh, I did disconnect these so I can bring the dash out a little bit further. These are very simple. There's two of them. One is smaller, one is larger. You can't miss it. Small, large. All right, guys, so you do have to have your CPC plugged in, obviously, for everything to communicate and work together. Right now, all I did was cycle the key and then the bolts jumped up. Let's make sure it's in neutral. Let's fire it up and verify our repairs. Oil pressure should jump up. If not, obviously we got something else going on. There we go. We got good oil pressure. We got charging. Low air indicator. That's pretty obvious. I'm not going to worry about that yet. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's let the air pressure build up so we can actually okay, hear what guys, I'm saying. So it looks like we have a successful repair. Our gauges are now responding. I still have this little light and that light is there because I did not have the CPC connected when I cycled the key. So I turned the key back off, connected the CPC and we're ready to go. So that code will, as you can see, inactive, but the light or the cluster will still show active. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just hit clear, clear codes. That should go away and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna take this thing out on the road. I'm gonna do a quick road test give this to the customer and we should be all set from there so guys if you have any questions again just a quick little video do it a little diy take care of this yourself you don't have to pay somebody um it's real simple again take the dash out look at your look at your little um jumper cables right back there the little jumper wires and hopefully the issue is right there guys have a great day again just a short sweet video um won't take up too much of your time have a great day appreciate y'all watching as always thank you